guys obviously a nice day to train. We'll have a nice training week and, and get them ready, get them sharp for our cell. Unfortunately, we're always talking about injuries and we're talking about the Sounders. Where are we now uh, going into this weekend? Uh, <laughs> we're still Tough depleted a little bit, but what I like to see is Victor's moving around pretty good. Ozzy's out on the field with him. Even Will's out on the field today, so those are, those are positives. Um, but the negatives obviously are, okay, they can be on the field, but are they at 100%? Are they at 90%? Are they 80%? Where's their recovery? Where's their risk at re-injury? Those are some of the things that we'll have to talk about as the week progresses. What's different, or is there anything different about training and preparing when you know you're playing an opponent two times in a row? Uh, all right, I don't think it changes because the home game is the most important. The next game is the most important, so we'll prepare for that. And then, you know, based on the results and what we see on the film, we'll, we'll adjust if we need to for their away match. The game on Saturday, injuries, was today more just guys getting flexibility type of thing, and then you'll go into the uh, tactics and whatnot later on in the week? Not yeah. With Damien's new training plan, the first uh, day back is always a reintroduction day. Level of soccer has to be high, but it's not that intense physically, and then we'll train them hard tomorrow. Corey Barron is uh, one of Jordan Morris's former um, teammates from college. Are you kind of getting some intel from Jordan as far as how to, how to play him? Um, we haven't asked him yet, but we've obviously seen the scouting report. We'll ask him a little about his personality as, as the week progresses. But, you know, he's a good kid, game kid, you know, scored a nice goal for him the other day. So, uh, you know, we'll, 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 we'll be doing a full dossier on the kid for sure. Chad Marshall and Kyle Zackerman, two the, uh, the two guys who yeah. starts in the outfield. Um, my outfield players in MLS history, how they've been both been able to do that for so long and, and been playing at such a high level? Well, I, I, I would say that they're both different in the sense that, that, that Kyle played in the midfield and he's got good engines, great engines, and you know he's kept himself relatively injury-free, uh, plays a very simple possession-oriented game. I think Chad, center back, is one of those positions that you can get further down the path um, just based on your output in games. Uh, you know, obviously Chad had some concussion injuries earlier in his career that sidetracked him a little bit, but both of them have stayed knock on wood injury free and uh, they've taken care of themselves and their game is suited for, you know, longevity. What makes Kyle so good and, and how, uh, how difficult is it to try and slow him down or try and uh, keep him from Dictating the tempo of the game, yeah. He he dictates their tempo playing out of the back, so we'll obviously, who's ever playing in that area of the field, we want Kyle to pass the ball to someone else. So, you know, that's the simplified version of that because Kyle's a good player and he's got a, he's got a couple other tricks in his bag. Sorry. I was, yeah, I was going to go back to Chad. Has his role changed? I just I caught what you said in terms of center back goes down the field this year with whoever's in front of him aside to him, the different changes in the back. Has he had to stay back more than normal, or he's just at that maturity level where he... No, I mean, he, Chad reads the game very well. He pushes forward when he needs to. You know, I wouldn't say that his strength is, you know, his on the ball, you know, pushing into the opponent's half and making a pass. I mean, Kim Kihi does that. I think Tony does that. Chad's strength is he can, you know, take a ball from over here and pinpoint a laser pass out to the opposite side of the field. That's how he gets himself involved in the attack. Um, but, you know, Chad is just very experienced and very, you know, very good at what he sees and how he sees the game. So how, I mean, what, what kind of comfort is it to have a guy who's experienced, mature, can read the it's game great. in the back. It's great. What does that oh, do? Love it. What does That's that why he's three-time defender of the year. <laughs> right. I mean, it's not me just bragging about him. It's 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 everybody else in the league understands what a good player he is. Does that enable the other guys, obviously, to be able to go down the field in knowing that you've got sure. a reader back yeah, there? Sure, yeah. I mean, center back is that position. I mean, there's times when we want to, you know, we call it active defending. When you know RSL is going to have Plata or whoever they have, Ruznak, you know the kids, Savarino. If those guys aren't defending as much as they should, then our defenders, as we possess the ball, need to be aware of 
guys like that. So we call it active defending, and Chad's very good at that. He reads the play, he sits there, prevents counters, prevents them from gaining possession. And then how important is that inside the box? Because even the Portland game, there was a couple of times where he read that and went up, and he had coverage in the back. Well, that was when we played a back line of five, so whether we do that or not, who's to say? Um, you know, I thought he played well in Portland. The, the team played well in Portland. We just you know, needed to manufacture a few more goal-scoring chances. What are your overall impressions of Henwala Buana's rookie season and how his game has translated Good. from UW to MLS? Good. I mean, in the beginning we th said he needed to bulk up a little bit. He's working on that. He's putting the work in the gym. Uh, his technical ability is very clean. Um, he just needs to, you know, figure out how to be a little more goal dangerous, which sometimes comes with experience. You know, sometimes comes with just acclimating yourself to guys like Clint or Will. I mean, he hasn't played with those guys for a while, so sometimes that synergy takes a while to, to build. But he's been good. Is there anyone RSL brought in, brought in during the offseason? Um, that you guys are particularly keeping an eye on? They've got some injury problems. I mean, look, they've got a good team, a quality team. In MLS, any any team in any given situation can win. So, you know, we're, we're wary of all their players. You sent three guys down to S2 over the weekend. Uh, was that mostly about fitness, and were you happy with what you saw? It was uh, exercise and fitness to get those guys some minutes, um, and it worked out good. I mean, they got a good result, 1-1. Had a chance at the end to, you know, maybe even come out with a victory, but thought it was a good exercise, good exercise for the players. Going back to Adwala, and I know, and some of the young guys, you had said in one of your game or press conferences when you talked to us that you wanted the young guys to step up and really take the opportunity. Has that message now gotten to them that it's their time? We'll see on Saturday. <laughs> okay. How about that? Okay. We'll see on Saturday.